If you want to see the finishing touches on a Scottish Terrier, keep on watching. Hello and welcome back to Kitty Talks Dog. Today we have Sully again. We've groomed Sully two weeks ago. Sully is a Scottish Terrier puppy, eight months old. When we groomed Sully, he was very long. He, we had to strip very much coat and it was hard on him because he was only eight months old. He's not used to grooming and this is why we decided to do a part two. It's normal we wash the Scottish Terrier's furnishings and beard. And actually at the dog show, we attend to wash like the whole dog a few days before the show. But if you have a puppy with a soft coat or if you have problems with a too soft coat, we don't recommend washing the back at all. The Scottish Terrier furnishings needs to have a long coat, so it's normal we can wash these furnishings with deep cleaning shampoo, then like purifying shampoo, and then we put a conditioner on top to, because the hair needs to stay long and we need to protect the hair from breakage. If you decide to wash the back of a terrier, you can wash with deep cleaning shampoo, like a detoxing shampoo with based on clay, like the Timaha clay shampoo, but never use a conditioning shampoo because these contain too much oils and automatically a conditioning shampoo will make the, because of the oils, it will make the coat go softer. Also never put conditioner on the back only use conditioner on the furnishing where the coat needs to be nurtured and the coat needs to be long and protected. If you have a terrier or even a schnauzer and you need to grow fast the beard, it's advisable to wash the beard every single week and to put conditioner on there to make sure the coat is nice, squeaky clean and always nurtured by the conditioner. If you would like to have more information about the products I'm using in this video, please don't forget to scroll down and there's a list there. If you click on there, you will have all the products which I used. And here you see Sully. Sully has been groomed two weeks ago and here and there you see some hair sticking out, but overall the hair looks very nice and very even. The hair also doesn't really look dirty and Sully is a very sweet dog, as you can see. Okay, now let's just take with my two hands or with the stripping knife, just lift the coat and take the longest part out. Not very much, just here and there do some finishing and take some more of the fluff out because Sully is just eight months old and the fluff which is still there is like really soft. And here you can see the hair is coming out that they are really pulled from the tip until the root. And here when you see Sully from the side you see some like from the fluffy hairs I prefer to do all the stripping before the bath, except for like the furnishing and the beard, maybe here and there in the furnishing, I will uh, strip a little bit, which is sticking out too much because I really like also the furnishing to be stripped. It means when I think about stripping, I think about uh, plucking and each time I pluck, there's a hair coming back and between here and two years, the also, the furnishing will stay nice and um, long, but there are also going to be different layers in the furnishing, which is going to make sure the hair stays nice and rough and the hair also is volu has volume. And when you open it up, you will see a very nice layers. You don't have to pull a lot on the furnishings, but a little bit goes very long and make sure later you will have a beautiful coat. Because Sully was sitting all the time here, you see me using the Comfort belly strap. It's the small size and it's not there to be very firm, but it's there when Sully wants to sit down, she can't and it makes us work easier at the back part. 
And here you see me plucking hairs on the furnishing at the feet. When you start scissoring and scissoring and scissoring, the feet, the hair around the feet and around the legs will be really very, uh, become very soft and very not hard anymore. And I really like to each time strip a little part around the feet. As you can see, I really strip only a little bit hairs at one time and also as you can see I'm trying not to get any lines in there so I'm trying to get a very natural finish from from short coat to the long furnishings. Here I'm learning to work with the heavy duty comb from the Sentinel. I like it very much it's made out of one piece and it's like um, very light, it's like a very special metal and it's like really good for terrier hair and it's also very good for the matting but I really like it to work on the terriers, to layer the coat or to see where to strip the next time and you know it's really fun to work with. I keep on combing to do the finishing. After combing you see how the hair is like falling or how, how it's natural and then you can see where the next time you need to take some more hair out. Here you see I'm trying with my left hand to hold the skin tight. If the skin is tight, it's like more comfortable for the dog to strip. And here from the top you see that I'm like taking out some furnishing hair, which is like sticking out too much. Here as well, see how the hair is layered, combing and lifting the hairs up. And then I like this very much, lifting the hair up on one movement. And then I see nicely the points. And then I take the points out. Only, I only like to use my fingers as a pin set with the stripping knife. And then I pull out the points. Here in slow motion, you see again how it's done. And here you see which stripping knife I was using. I was using the W2. You can see there at the shoulder, I have to be careful not to go too short or you, you just keep on pulling, pulling, pulling because it's like a bubble there or you see more hair there. But if you're not careful, suddenly you will have a bald spot. So you have to do really little bits at the time. As you can see here, I was lifting up the hair because I saw like the skin in between and it's no problem. You, this, you won't see the skin, but you just know you have to be really careful at certain points not to take out too much. Here you saw me like stacking Sully. It's very important that in between when you are working on the back and the top line that you stack the dogs so you see how they carry their neck and their top line and that's the right way to like do the finishing from the top line. Let's do some bathing. And I'm also going to show you how you can save some time for drying. So here you see me putting on the drying cabinet. I'm using one of my favorite shampoos today, which is the Showtech Super Clean 40. The reason I like this shampoo so much is because it's a very good cleaning shampoo, which cleans really deep. It's very good for greasy dogs. I also like it very much for if your dog had a walk in the city and he's all black from the streets, this black will come right off and the hair will not change its structure and it's just also very good to use in the grooming shop. For the second shampoo, I decided to use the Timaha clay shampoo. The Timaha shampoo will purify the coat or detox the coat. It all the impurities from last products or whatever is on the coat, it will purify and it will leave the coat very clean and very natural. For conditioner, I really like the Showtech Ultimate Conditioning Mask. This is also quite concentrated and quite thick. 
You just have to use a little bit and it will like protect the coat, not from breakage. It will nurture the coat after the washing and it will also make sure the coat is shiny and looks very natural. You can put the shampoos in after diluting with water in a mixing bowl, but personally, I love the foaming sponge. I like the foaming sponge to use it for applying the shampoo, and I like it so much because when you use that, it feels like immediately you have a lot of foam, and you wash with the foam layer, with the lather, and it helps to go fast. I like to prepare the shampoo just before I wet the dog because the shampoo is in containing like nutrition uh, ingredients which need a little bit time to dissolve because it's such a concentrated shampoo. So I do this always in warm, uh, I would say hot, but I don't really want to say hot, but certainly not cold water, like as warm as possible. So for sure when you then put the water on the dog or the shampoo on the dog, you don't hurt the dog, but you know, as warm as possible. Here you see me mixing the shampoo with the water. As you can see, the Timaha is like a gelish kind of shampoo, which has a very fun texture to it. It's also a bit like a clay color. And I've put a half a liter of water in this shampoo and the water is warm. And here also the same thing for the Super Clean 40, which is even more concentrated. Just prepare it just before you start so the, the ingredients can dissolve in the warm water. And here you see me wetting Sully and applying the Super Clean 40 with the foaming sponge. As you can see, immediately you have a lot of foam and as soon as I will start washing, you will see a very nice lather. I'm not gonna wash the short area. I'm just gonna wash around the legs and the tummy. And when I finished washing, I'm gonna apply the shampoo to the beard. And the first thing I'm gonna rinse is the beard again. Here you see me rinsing and rinsing the tummy, trying to change the shower to have some more pressure to rinse underneath. Here again, you see me rubbing the coat. And the last thing I'm going to wash is the beard again. And again, I'm going to rinse. And here you see me applying the conditioner. I'm just putting some in my hands and applying it full on the dog. And here you see me rinsing well. I also would like to say why I rinse the conditioner all, all the time well. I, I think when you use the conditioner, the conditioner will like, uh, the hair will absorb the nutrition ingredients from the conditioner, but then when you are rinsing, I really uh, feel like you have to rinse everything out because the hair already absorbed all it needs and it's not necessary to leave any of the conditioner on the coat. So I like to rinse everything very well. And here you see Sully going in the drying cabinet. Sully feels a bit sorry for himself now, but soon he is going to relax. Here you see there is a very nice airflow going on in the cabinet because you see the hairs like flying up about. And here you see there's only a few seconds left from the 15 minutes Sully was in the drying cabinet. And here you see a Sully coming out of the cabinet. And now we just have to brush the coat with a fine brush to make all the hairs very straight. So we can do the finishing of the head and the furnishing. I like the smooth slicker very much. First of all, it has a long handle and it has like uh, the pins which are very closely to each other and very soft 
and because of the pins this, from the slicker are all very close to each other, when you are drying with a warm air, you can like pull the coat and it will straighten at that time very good. And here I'm just testing because the owner of Sully said that Sully is used to lying on her back to be brushed. So here I see she is letting me even dry her tummy totally while she is lying down. So Sully wasn't totally dry from the drying cabinet, but she was still a little damp. And that's exactly what we need, because if you would leave the dogs to dry from the air dry or from the dryer without brushing, they would here and there not be very straight. And we need some damp, as the, the, the coat still to be damp to be able to brush correctly. Now let's do some finishing. I have the Yento 6060 pin brush. I like this pin brush because it has quite long pins and the pins are extremely flexible. So I like this pin brush very much. And then I'm still going to use the Sentinel comb and I'm going to use the Greyhound comb. I still like to use the Smooth Touch Slicker. And then I have my two pads. I have one pad, which is the terrier pad, and the other pad is the Bristol and Brass finishing brush, which I'm going to use to make the hair on the back go all shiny. And here again, I am combing and still not very happy about the back end because here and there I see hairs sticking out and I really like this area to be nice, smooth and flat. So I'm combing the hairs in other positions and seeing where there is hairs sticking out and just trying to pull on the tips. Here at the shoulder, I also like to have a very smooth shoulder until where the, the leg starts. And if you are doubting, follow the elbow and approximately like one finger above the air elbow you can start the leg and here you see which hairs i am still trying to get rid of these hairs were nicely flat before the bath but now i see them so when i see them let's get rid of them here as well just some small hairs sticking out I like to use the finger condoms very well for this because the finger condoms, you have a very good feeling still which hairs you are taking and the finger condoms have an, a fantastic grip. Here you see me using the condoms together with the solid stripper. Actually, the solid stripper has no teeth and it's also ideal for like pulling and without hurting the coat. Just pulling from the tip to the root and together if you use them with the condoms, the finger condoms, they go very well. I'm starting to scissor. Also here all the parts which are sticking out, I'm going to scissor away. If I can give you a tip, I virtually never work across or maybe never but I always try to work with the direction of the hair growth or against the direction of the hair growth. Here you will see me turning my scissors because here the hair is like growing in a circle and you have to like follow the circle. So here you will see me doing strange movements with my scissor. <laughs> here you see me using the comb very much to see the natural flow of the hair and where it's going or where the tips are not supposed to be. And I like to do that very much, combing a lot, scissoring, combing, scissoring, until it's all nice, flat and smooth. When you step where, where you stand, where I stand, you see the profile and you see very much the way the shoulder is built and then the way the leg is starting and you see the chest sticking out a bit. Uh, it's very important. This and it's also very important, it's neat and like smooth. And here you see me plucking again at the front legs. 
Combing again, seeing what's sticking out and repeating. You have to take your time to do this. Actually, when you have a dog who needs to go to the dog show, this is done like weekly, weeks ahead and before the show to make sure every single hair is nicely layered. And But when you have a dog who goes to the grooming shop, as you can see now how much work it is to finish the dog. And it's very, very difficult in one go to do the whole grooming. I've done the tail before stripping and I've done the back of the tail a little with the blending sear and here you see me doing the finishing. And now the feet, I've done all the stripping I can and now I'm just going to go around the edges with the scissor and make them as round as possible. Here we don't really go very short in between the pads but we just go around the pads and make them as clean as possible. At the back of the pads, I like to like clean everything very clean. And even at the same direction of the pads, I cut everything off, as you can see here. Don't forget to keep on combing and scissoring and combing and scissoring. Here you can see on the coat that Sully is just an eight month old puppy because the hair is not so long yet. When you are doing the front legs, it's not like you have like a straight line and then suddenly a bubble or a half a circle. I, even though it's like a, a Scottish Terrier, I like to have a, a line and, and not like uh, suddenly it goes out with the front feet. No, I like to have a quite straight line. Okay, now the beard. Here, a lot of hair needs to go but I would like to work a little bit on our own future. Now, if I take a little bit of the points out, I won't take a lot, but I would like to do that every single time Sully is being groomed, because then when it comes back the hair, you will create a future by putting there as well a little bit of rough coat and a little bit of different layers each time he comes. So here I don't mind also like, I see it more like thinning and after I've done a little, then I will cut it. If we would have had seen Sully a little earlier because Sully was eight months the first time he came, we could have already done that and it would have been already in some different layers. But now the only thing we can do is think about the, Sully's next grooming and just thin the, the beard a little and then, as you can see here, finish the beard with the scissors. Here, as you can see, I'm like combing everything and I'm making a, a virtual line in my head and everything that comes out of the virtual line, I'm cutting. If you want to know more information, please go and see part one where you have drawings from the head, from the top view, from the side view and more explaining how to groom the head. So here now you see me grooming the other side and here as well I've been combing and everything that comes out of the line which is like a square line, so a square like here and top and uh, everything which comes out of that line, you can scissor. It's not starting like at the eyes, but it's like starting a little behind the eyes because if you start here, suddenly you will have like a face which is going in and this is absolutely not good. And now the eyebrows, which we've done two weeks ago, but deliberately left a little too long because I wanted to show you how easy it is after washing and how more straight you can make them. So now I'm going to make them a little shorter. The eyebrows are also a little personal. You have people who like them a little longer and a little shorter. I personally don't like them so very long, so I am going to make them a little shorter. The eyebrows from a Scottish Terrier looks very difficult, but actually they are not. It's very easy. It's a triangle. 
from the eyes to the nose is a straight line, from the outside to the nose is you finish triangle and when you are finished the other side, from the outside to the nose you have your two triangles. Here you see me working on the beard. Next to the nose we like to just have a little edge so the beard looks longer and the nose is visible. And now we can finish the top of the nose and make it clean. Keep on combing and working on everything until it's nice and clean and smooth. And now you see me like holding my hands in at the back of the ears so I have a nice view on the ears and how they are looking. Let's finish the back. We are using the brass brush here. And as you can see, look all the dandruff coming out. This is a fantastic brush. The only thing is it attracts very much the dandruff and all the dirt. And as soon as you are finished using it, you like have to wash the brush because if it's full of dandruff, it will not attract more dandruff because it's like penetrated and full of it. And the only thing you need to do is get the brush clean and start all over again and you will get the coat all short coated or half long coated, very shiny with this brush. And here you see a finished Sully, which is very happy and trying to fix my hair. <laughs> I was very happy and proud to be able to groom Sully. Uh, she has a good foundation now. She has very good table manners and I hope she has fun in the grooming for the rest of her life. And here you see the before and the after pictures from Sully. If you would like to have more information about the products I was using, if you scroll down, there's a link there. If you push on there, we have a blog with explanations about the products. Thank you for watching. This was Kitty for Kitty Talks Dogs. Keep on grooming with passion and see you next time.